Good afternoon, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen. It's about 12 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. I am the Crypto Crow. I'm going to do a few different things today. Um, one, I'm going to talk about Crow Tokens for just a second. Uh, the website is up. It's crowtokens.com. And uh, I the, the tokens are minted, uh, ready to start distributing them out freely. Uh, just go to the website and you can learn a little bit about what it is. And uh, basically, it's just a fun thing. Okay. And it's not, uh, you know, it basically, I, I called it Cardano's best shit coin. <laughs> Uh, but I did the website last night and, uh, you know, I've got everything on here, uh, for the most part <clears throat> and it's just fun. And I'm going to start distributing them out to people in my comments, people, uh, if you're a murder of crows holder, uh, you're likely going to get some at some point. Um, just a lot of different things. I'm just going to be distributing these things out to the world and, uh, just kind of a fun Fun thing, and if anything comes of it, great. But uh, I make no promises whatsoever. It's a shit coin. It's a meme coin. It's just for fun, and whatever happens, happens. Um, there's no use case. There's no real roadmap. There's no. Uh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. If they if they become useful someday in the future for anything at all, fantastic. But ultimately, uh, a lot of what happens is going to depend on you. And what the public wants to do with them. I wrote a little bit of an article about them. You can check that out on the blog. Um, just kind of laying it out a little bit. I'm going to basically be using this website as kind of my tongue-in-cheek way to vent in the future. Uh, if I want to write an article where I just want to make fun of stuff, this is probably where I'm going to do it. And it's just going to be a fun thing for me and a way for me to just kind of express myself and vent. So if you're at all interested, check it out. Crowtokens.com. I appreciate it. Cardano releases a massive update, node 8.0.0. Um, <clears throat> Cardano has unveiled a major update to its blockchain with the release of node 8.00, laying the groundwork for the Conway Ledger era. This update is a vital step forward for the Cardano ecosystem as it brings several essential features that could impact the ADA token's future. The release node marks the beginning of experimental support for the Conway era, also known as Voltaire, or the governance protocols on Cardano. While this version does not yet include any Voltaire features, it sets the stage for their implementation by creating transaction formats and providing the ability to hard fork into the era. Voltaire is anticipated to in introduce crucial governance capabilities to Cardano, further decentralizing the network and empowering its com it, it, uh, its community. Now, I talked to my dev about it because, you know, it was basically launched to say, hey, you know, update your nodes um, and all of that. But the consensus in the community right now is that this is not yet really ready for deployment on nodes. Um, and, and that they're waiting for some adjustments and things to come. So while it's a big update, there's nothing major on it yet. And apparently even Charles, I don't have it. Um, but apparently Charles even said, you know, it's probably not best to update your node, uh, with this node 8.00 just yet. Uh, Cardano TVL back up. I mean, it's been steadily climbing, increasing. It's back up to 187 million in total value locked. And there's also another uh, element to this that, uh, that was pointed out in my comments. I love you guys in my comments. I truly do. Um, because you guys bring things to my attention that while I know it in my head, I don't often talk about it. I don't bring it up, which is a part of the reason why I used to really like writing my videos to some degree and then reading them. But a lot of you guys didn't like that because you didn't consider that as real, even though in many ways it's much more real um, than what I do when I just kind of ramble. But um, the thing of it is, is a lot of Cardano staked, it's not locked. So all of the stake data that's out there isn't counted in the TVL, apparently. It's basically just uh, because, because it's just not locked up for any period of time, so it's not considered to be locked, it's just staked. So it doesn't get added to um, the TVL of Cardano. If it did, well, then, you know, obviously this TVL would be substantially higher, but it's one of the few blockchains out there that don't require you to lock your tokens for a period of time, um, leaving them inaccessible to you until that time has expired. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind when you're looking at TVL uh, numbers. Um, 
looking at Cardano's price, obviously with the Hydra mainnet launch, we've continued to move down, but we already started to move down a little bit prior to that. And and quite frankly, we, we started a bit of a downtrend when we hit all the way up to about 46 cents. This is common. This is just par for the course. We're still at a market that's pre-halving. We still have almost a year until the next halving, which is when Bitcoin's mining yield gets cut in half. And I don't worry about any of this, uh, quite frankly. I mean, we're currently trading at about 36 cents. We've wicked down to as low as 35 cents. And to me, it's just more opportunities to average in. I mean, especially if you're on any kind of fixed income or, uh, you know, if you're living check to check and you're only able to invest so much at a time. Well, these, these periods before the halving, ultimately give you the ability to do exactly that, to average in over time. And it kind of forces you to be a little more responsible rather than just go all in and I'm gonna put $100,000 into this and all, you know. So um, I consider this a very good thing. And ultimately this is like the rubber band being pulled back over time and it's stretching and stretching and it's building that, 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 that power, that kinetic energy before it really starts to take off post having. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind as we continue to move forward. This is a, just a good opportunity for people to continue educating themselves, you know, build their projects, do whatever you're gonna do. Um, now we're gonna address some things that may trigger you. Um, because I, I see this on SoBlox. The SoBlox, uh, obviously, you guys know by now, is my social media platform that we've been building for a while. We've got a lot of stuff coming. Um, and I, I actually liked the, so I like the engagement and I like that people are using it and posting it and, and getting engaged. And it's also helping me better understand how we kind of want the interface to work and all of that. But that's beside the point. I'm seeing, you know, like Nightcrow. I don't know who this is, but I, I'm grateful. I'm glad that they're using the platform. Obviously, they're a supporter of some kind, even if they don't necessarily agree with me or what I do, because he's making cracks about, um, you know, uh, things being for shits and giggles, right? The Crow NFT, the Crow token, and then SoBlox will also end up being for shits and giggles as well. But there are those who stand up and make a difference. And he's talking about Tucker Carlson, right? And he's and he's basically talking about Tucker and how, you know, he was really, you know, for whatever reason, he was released from Fox News, whether it was a, a, you know, a disagreement or he just didn't like the way the machine worked anymore. And he made this big spiel um, before leaving. And, and I know that some of his videos on Twitter got like, 80 million views. I mean, it was insane. Um, and I was reading through some of the comments and it goes all the way down. And I read the last one here. When Mr. Appleton realizes that he has all the attributes necessary to become a great anchor on YouTube and assist in halting the dynamic of destruction that is about to engulf his country. So I'm assuming he's from like the UK or something. I don't know. That's when he will stop playing Ultima for hour without end. So maybe he's not from the UK. I don't know where he is. Um, so obviously, I actually look at this differently than some people might. Some people might look at this and be like, well, this guy's insulting you. I don't think so. I read this. And for whatever reason, it hit me as a plea for help. Um, a, 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 I know that the the way... I mean, it's easy to read stuff and, and immediately assume the worst of, of anything, right? It's easy to read something and assume that, you know, this person's taking a jab at you or this person's trying to insult you or trying to say, oh, you're, he's trying to say you waste your time and everything you do is just for shits and giggles. You're not serious about anything, right? And, and but I read through all of that and to me, the bottom line is he, this individual, I assume it's a he, I don't know, um, is basically pleading for help. Like, Crow, why don't you use what you have for stuff that's a little bit more serious and a little more helpful to everyone? Um, <clears throat> and and I, I respect what he said. I really do. And here's the thing. I, I was never really political at all prior to Trump. I just never cared. It was always very much a kind of a run of the mill performance for the public in my opinion where you know any any real chance for anything to matter um just it didn't nothing mattered i mean what mattered are are the people who are able to get into positions of power and get into office 
by, you know, lying, cheating, stealing, you know, doing whatever they can to get into that position. And then from there, it's it's really just, you know, they're they're making decisions, passing laws and things based off of who's going to contribute to their next campaign or who's going to, you know, it's all a business. Politics anymore is just no longer a by the people for the people establishment. It's just not. Our government is absolutely not. And while I would love to be a um, kind of a consistent talking head in politics, here's the thing. I can say anything I want to you. I can express exactly how I feel politically, how I feel about the world. And the way I look at it is the people that are going to love that content are the people that already agree with me. The people that don't love that content are the people that don't agree with me. And there is such a thick wall of division between the two nowadays that you almost have to cater to one side or the other uh, to get anywhere. But where you're not going to get, most likely, is any real um, coming together. And and I, I have tried this many times. I have liberal friends. And, and I appreciate them and I, and I understand how they feel and I understand what, why, I, I, to, to some degree, I understand why they think the way they do, but this isn't a new, a new thing. The division in politics today, <clears throat> sorry, I'm like in the final days of this bad cold. I know it's gross. Um, the, the politics of today is so divided but it's divided based off of decades of indoctrination to either side, to a large degree. You've got basically what, you have this capitalist machine that it's all hell bent on profits at any expense. Uh, you know, that's the narrative, right? And, and that, you know, they don't care. Uh, it's all about religion and it's all about money and God. That's the right, you know, conservative. You're conservative, you're lame, right? But that's not it. That's the narrative that so many have, have been sold. And then you look at the left, and the left is, you know, super emotional, um, you know, uh, a lot of, of mental issues, drug abuse, sex addiction, um, basically anything is anything, uh, and, and it's all based off of how you feel, not the facts, not the real, not the details, you know, very lazy, they're very group thinkish, right? That's, and, and it's, it's almost like a mob of zombies. Like that's how, you know, I was actually doing some artificial intelligence graphics and I was gonna do two sides of it, how the left seems the right how the right see the left and then how the media projects each of them and the thing of it is is you've got the extreme right and you have the extreme left typically those two groups are the most vocal minority of their general factions if you will okay um and and there are a lot of there are a lot of, of gay, lesbian, I mean, a lot of people in the LGBTQ plus communities that don't agree with a lot of the craziness that the liberals are pushing on a regular basis. They don't want any part of it. I know many of them, okay? And the same way, you know, you have like the hardcore extreme MAGA people, right? There are people on the right that aren't down with that either. Like there are a lot of people with what I would consider critical thinking on both sides, believe it or not. But we get so tied up and we get so caught up in the words and the efforts of the few that we we basically paint a broad stroke picture of everyone within those categories because that's how we're being programmed to think. We're being programmed to think that the minorities of each half of society uh, speak for everyone else because it makes it easier for dramatic and drastic changes to look like they are the majority interest, okay? And, and this, is, this is my point. A lot of these narratives established and perpetuated by the minorities of either side are often established and perpetuated by those that obtain more power or money from whatever that narrative may be, okay? That is politics today.
And when I see it, and I, I see it all the time, I cannot read a liberal article. I try all the time. I try so hard to read liberal news and, and just try and expose myself to the other side of the coin because I believe that in order to truly establish any kind of baseline of truth, you have to kind of cut, cut the cake down the middle, so to speak. And anytime I read a liberal article, I am so, I feel dirty. I feel like I'm bring, I'm being brainwashed. I'm being told what to think. Everything is so leading. I mean, to the point where it's nauseating. Um, you know, even even if I watch news interviews and I watch, you know, somebody interview somebody on the left. Um, oh, I saw somebody recently. They were they were interviewing. I guess they were talking to Biden, and 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 she said something to the effect of, you know, uh, so what do you what are your feelings right now based off of these this new new uh, evidence against Hunter? I I know you're not connected in any way, but and it's like, wait a minute, how do you know? And and why are we like? And, and so many of these things are orchestrated beforehand. They're already trying to put in your mind, watching the interview, that there is no connection to him, right? And that, and, and it's like, there's no evidence to support that. There's apparently more evidence to support the other way. But the narrative is not, that, that's not what they want the narrative to be, whether it's to protect the, the president in office, which we know that's not really a thing, right? Like, we've seen so many narratives um, be conjured up so that the the as many people as possible not only dislike the former president but hate him. Right? What happens when we hate someone? When we just can't stand someone? When they make us feel icky? We dehumanize them, and we make it okay for anything that happens to that indiv individual to happen because. We've already established our feelings for that individual. We don't trust them, we don't like them, they're cocky, they're arrogant, they're this, they're that, they're they're just a terrible bad person and they deserve to whatever, whatever happens to that person. But that is not righteous in any way. That is not um, understanding, compassionate. It, it's not any of those things that so many people pretend to be when in reality, it's all a very self-serving narcissistic effort to acquire power and dominance. And, 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 and I feel that, you know, when I see the arguments posed by, um, by liberals or leftists or what have you, there's a big dramatic difference between left and right in terms of information, reality, right? A lot of the, the, the liberals that I know are very, very emotional people. And deep down, they really mean well. They really do mean well. But they don't. They don't. Um, they don't seem to be able to process information the same way as, say, somebody on the right. And I don't mean that as an insult. But what I'm saying is, is that if there's anything that the political left has learned, is how to cater to, maintain interest of, and perpetuate ideals and narratives within their own camp. And a lot of that is fueled by emotion. Not facts, but emotion. And when you can trigger somebody emotionally, nothing else matters. Because how often do we do things in the heat of passion or in the heat of anger that logically we know is not right, we know is not a good idea, but we don't care, we lose control. And we're constantly, I see a, the, the left constantly pushing the left-wing uh, populace into a constant state of losing control. They're so angry, they're so emotional that all logic goes out the window and it's all about the way this particular subject makes so someone feel and how to act on it. And, and that is creating so many problems, right? And then, and then you have the right who you know, a lot of the right wing individuals, they, they tend to come off based on logic and fact and things like that. But even the right right wing pundits, the right wing narrative leaves out a lot of details and a lot of their stories, narrative reporting, whatever the case may be. But the, the, the thing that nobody seems to grasp in all of this division, okay, is this isn't just about right versus left politics. 
This is about global establishment of power and control. And each side is using the emotional trigger points of their base to establish tighter and tighter controls on everyone. Because what you have is whether you're right or you're left, or even in the center, you have a lot of puppets being controlled by people that you never see, you never hear about, you don't know anything about, you don't know why they exist. Or even when you wanna talk about things like the World Economic Forum, if you go to their website, everything reads like, we're gonna create a better tomorrow. Everything's fruit flies and butterflies and, and, and it's all like, you know, giant watermelon and we're gonna help you live forever and we're gonna do all of these fantastic things. But how many organizations that are hell bent on doing a lot of things the general public does not like is not necessarily natural or in the vein of anything positive. How many of them just want to come out with a big, bold, black website with a bunch of, you know, uh, symbols thrown all over it and a bunch of people dressed in robes playing with fire and they're going to say, um, yeah, we're just here to control each and every one of you and we're going to. It's just a matter of time and inch by inch, we're making sure that that is a reality for all. Thanks for stopping by. Nobody does that. Okay, because there'd be revolts all over the place if it were that simple. A lot of it is about infiltration. If you look, and, and I, I, I implore anyone um, who, who has some time and, and, and genuinely cares, okay, whether you're right or left, if you genuinely care about what's happening in this country, and not just this country, but in order to understand what's happening in this country, you have to understand what's happening on a global level, okay? And to understand that, you have to understand the World Economic Forum better. And keep in mind that the World Economic Forum is only one of one of these groups. There are multiple groups, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberg Group, the other, so many of these different groups that they meet and congregate in private and make plans for the society in, in the future. One of the ones that, that, one of the first ones that people heard about back in the day was by the crazy train Alex Jones who infiltrated the Bohemian Grove, which is basically where all the presidents and media and, and bankers and everybody used to get together and basically have these little plays in the woods and do God knows what. And it was basically just a way to escape all reality while conducting business and, and, and planning things out in the future. There are so many of these different groups and they have different branches, right? But to understand what's going on significantly right now in the world, you have to better understand the World Economic Forum and go into its member list. Go, I download it. I, there's a, there's a, there, um, I'm pretty sure I found it on their website. I can't remember where I found it, but it basically has every member of the World Economic Forum forever, okay? It's a big file. Go and find out who these people are and then find out what parts of different governments they control now throughout the world. And you will see that you have a lot of, of, of people who have been propped up, cultivated, indoctrinated, whatever you wanna call it, okay? And the people that are in major positions of power are all acting in a similar fashion. They're all doing very similar things with their country or, or whatever they can do in their seat, whatever that seat may be in whatever form of government they're in and whatever country they're in. If you look at their uh, what they're doing, you can put all the pieces together and realize that it's all a part of a branching, uh, well-orchestrated network of people in politics, finance, media, you name it. Okay, and then you have to ask yourself, wow, that's really interesting. Why is this happening? Why, why, how, A, how is this possible? And B, why is this happening? And you have to understand that when you see a lot of these people in these groups talk, they, they want less people in the world. They want more control over everything. They want no privacy for anyone because you know there are there are reasons, right? They there are so many different things that they are trying to push for that go against the very grain of society as a whole. And and yet, politically, who are they using primarily to usher in a lot of these ad agendas? They're they're using the ones who ignore logic facts and reality in many cases in favor of things that get them emotionally triggered to feel more righteous about their actions no matter how bad they may be.
and to get us to look at other human beings as less than human beings. So while we talk about inclusion and we talk about compassion and acceptance and all of these things, we don't actually see much of that from the very people that are screaming about needing it and wanting it and must having it uh, in society today. Because what they, they, they demand is for us to include them in any way they come, that may change at any time, and it's a constantly moving goalpost. And it's not a goalpost that's ultimately moved by them, but their narratives and their agenda and whatever trigger points are being pushed are starting from where? A lot of them are starting from the institutions that they pay and go into debt to learn all this stuff. College institutions, universities, this is where they're picking up a lot of this stuff. And a lot of this narrative is stemming from, and I know a lot of people say these things and a lot of people don't even understand what they mean. Marxist ideals, okay? Socialistic ideals. A lot of this stuff stems from socialist um, efforts and agendas, I mean, since the dawn of time, for the most part, since, since the beginning of, of any of it, okay? And if you actually read any books on Marxism, you will you will see that the down to um, and I read a lot of this stuff. I I, I check out a lot. I listen to a lot of audio a lot of audio books from everyone uh, from Glenn Beck to Klaus Schwab. I I I take it all in. Okay, and and I don't talk about it often on YouTube because part of the socialist Marxist ideals involves censorship. You have to silence those that oppose your perspective. Because if they, if you, if you, if you let people run with the freedom of speech, freedom of thought, they will, and that will generally go against the ideals that you're trying to establish for the future that you want to establish for yourself. That self-establishment future is one of control, silence, obedience, compliance, etc., etc., etc. And it's also easier to control the few than it is to control the many. So. How do you resolve that? There are so many things happening in the world right now that so many people are not aware of because they either A, don't have the time to research it, B, they they only listen to one side or the other. Okay, well, like my mom, she has Fox News on 24-7. She's just sucking it all up like a sponge. And I have to sometimes tell her, because she'll say, oh, did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? I'd say, no, mom. I know what actually happened. I don't know where you got that, but that's half of it. That's half true. That's some bogus nonsense or that's like a hoax. You know what I mean? And and that's the problem because we get indoctrinated into our own ideal set that is perpetuated by the algorithms that we engage with that continue pushing that content in front of us further and further down the road. And often it can branch out into 20 different places, the majority of which can be complete nonsense. You know, even in my Twisted Times collection, um, where it's basically like a, a parody of everything that was going on during COVID. I mean, I created Twisted Times as a fun thing to try and bring a community together. And one of them is Q. And it's basically just, um, hold on, I'll go to, I'll show you. It's basically a guy throwing poop at the wall. And it's like, you know, cause a lot of people think I'm one way or another, I think one way or another, but the reality is, if I am, if I'm looking at a lot of the, of what's going on in the world, like here's Q, he's just, he's got poop all over the wall. Cause that's what happened It's basically somebody who's just throwing crap all over the place to see what sticks. That's the way I looked at Q. I never bought into a lot of that garbage, you know, but like here you've got right versus left. It's basically a big play and they're being controlled by people holding the strings. You've got right versus left and you've got the rest of the world out just watching it all. Notice they're all in prison uniforms because that's ultimately what we are. We are, you know, one of the, I don't remember who said it, but one of the easiest ways to establish a prison is to basically make sure that the people in prison don't realize they're in prison. And the more that we continue to censor ourselves and censor each other, the more we are, are are basically confining ourselves. You know, I mean, what's one of the thing, anytime you watch a prison movie or you watch somebody talk about prison, they say, you can put my body in here, but not my mind, right? But they're trying to make sure that we don't even have the freedom of thought. 
to a large degree. And if we do, we're dare we express it in any way because if it goes against the general narrative, especially as it relates to these plans like ESG, okay? ESG is basically just a, I can't even get into it because probably this video would probably go away. You know, I, I, I just, I guess all I'm trying to say, and I'm trying to be as clear in my thought as possible, which is generally not that easy, politics you've got a politician sucking the money out of out of the people and then just basically crapping it out to all of their donors and everybody their lobbyists and everybody else just so they can maintain their seat in power i mean there's so much that happens right now and so many people are oblivious to it this is offensive oliver he's just a normal dude he's just a dude but he's got all these people behind him with signs and they're burning stuff and they're mad and they're like, you're offensive, you're offensive. And he's just like, I just exist. I'm just a guy, I wear glasses, I've got a mustache. Like, how am I offensive to you? Because that's what triggers people. It, we're constantly creating ways to get each other triggered and angry and frustrated so that we revolt. I mean, we've got one particular individual billionaire who's funding so much stuff to just create chaos in as many possible ways. Why do you think that is? Do you honestly think that these people are bent on some altruistic agenda to better serve the world over? Really? I don't think so. And you know, maybe at some point in the future, I will do more political content related to specific articles and things. If that's of, maybe I'll do that on another channel. Um, let me know in the comments. Like, do you guys really care what I have to say about a lot of this stuff? And this is a, a, a an intentional challenge. I've been talking for 31 minutes. Let's see how long my watch times are. How many of you actually still here listening to me right now? Um, you know, I, I've typically lately, I've been trying to keep my, my videos down to around six and a half minutes because it seems to drive up my subscribers and drive up everything. But it's difficult for me to talk about politics and stuff in a clear way without being quite a bit verbose in the process. And there's so much going through my head right now that I could literally have 20 conversations simultaneously if I could just get the words out. And it's diff that's a challenge for me, which is one of the reasons why I, was, I tried to write my, my content down as a script and then read it out to you, but nobody likes that because it felt disingenuous and it didn't feel real. And I understand. Um, but let me know in the comments below what you guys have to say. What do you guys think? Um, there's so much to be said and there's just so much. And the, the problem is, is I feel like when I do speak um, openly about a lot of this stuff, you know, one side or the other is either generally not paying attention or they're, they're, you know, they're already supportive. Like, am I changing anybody's thought process? You know, if I'm able to help people better understand what's going on in the world and make sense of things to them and bring them somewhere closer to the middle so that they're not as easily affected by the, the, the agendas put forth by those in, in control and those that have power over us, you know, then I would start to feel like it, maybe it's worth it. But so far I see, and I'm not saying I don't appreciate it, but I see a lot of people on one side or the other, primarily the right, basically say, you know, great content, love what you do, love what you say, agree with everything you say. And while that's cool, I don't wanna just be a proponent for the right. I wanna be a proponent for truth. And, and I wanna be a proponent for the things that make sense that are really going on in the world in a way that helps both sides. That would be my ultimate goal, to make sense of things for both sides so that we can all establish a more firm and stronger understanding of why we look at each other the way we do and what we need to change to establish more unity between both sides. Because that's ultimately what has to happen in order for us to be able to move forward as a society and benefit one another with the existence of one another, if that makes any sense. I don't wanna sound like Kamala Harris in all of this. <laughs> to understand what makes sense between the two, we must look into what makes sense between the two so that we have an understanding of what makes sense between the two. <laughs> I love you guys. I'm gonna sign off here. I'm gonna be reading the comments quite a bit and maybe I'll make some plans for the future depending on what that is. Make sure you throw your Cardano address 
uh, down with your comment and uh, you might just get some crow tokens here in the near future. I am making a list and checking it twice. And at one point there's just gonna be a big distribution blast airdrop. So just let you guys know until next time guys, crow your coins. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon.